lessons for a geometry class. And what it is, is it's graphing different rivers from around the world. Uh, we have a video showing um, some of the different rivers. They're put in elevations, they take out elevations. And what the kids need to do is, uh, on each individual graph, they, they label the put in and take out elevations, the distance of the run, and they come up with the gradient. So the gradient of their line that represents the river is the same as the gradient of the river itself. One of the objectives was just to get the students to incorporate uh, the four basic needs into this lesson. And we thought that the, the river is a perfect medium to do that because it meets all of the needs. And so we were to just jigsaw the jigsaw to learn the needs and then break back up into our home groups and then uh, apply these needs into a, a pamphlet. And the goal was to get them to make a pamphlet that incorporated the math and the needs. So here's a graph here. You could see, for an example, Giant Gap, which uh, the takeout for this river run, I think it's one of the most spectacular rivers in the world, but the takeout's just five minutes from here, so a lot of kids actually know, know this river. It has a put-in elevation of 4,000 feet. The takeout elevation is about 1,600 feet, and the length of the run's 18 miles. So they, they graph those three variables, and that gives a line at a certain slope, and that slope is a gradient of the river. But also, you re relate it to the equation of y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope of a line. Right around here is about the best place in the world for uh, rafting and kayaking. So you can tell by the gradient of the river how hard, how hard the run's going to be. Here's the video. We saw the video. Uh, the next step for us is I just kind of want to uh, ask the question, why would, why would somebody, what would drive somebody to go down a river that could potentially kill them at any given point? Any ideas? Why, why, would, why would somebody do that? Raise your hand. Explain it. Summer? For the thrill. Okay. What else? Good. I think about those four things you told us to think about. Maybe the belonging to be belong to that elite group of like whitewater people that can do that. So you go do all the gnarly you know, a high-class whitewater to, to be in a, a, a social clique, right? To be in the elite. What else? Like adventure. Adventure, okay. So if thrilling adventure to belong to a group, what would you say would be, what would meet the need of freedom more so, a kayaker or a paddle crew? Kayaker and paddle crew. Why, paddle, why would the paddle crew um, be a belonging? Why? Somebody explain that because they're working together. We're going to do what's called jigsaw. So we're going to cover all four of these needs in a short amount of time. If we do this uh, correctly and efficiently, it should take about 10 minutes, maybe a little longer, 15 minutes. And within your group, over on this table over here, I have all of the needs. Pick one person from your group and get one of each of the needs. Okay. So you should, when you come back to your desk, you should have one of each color, you should all have different needs. One person, okay? Go ahead and do that now. I want you to read the need that, you're, that you have in front of you. What you're going to be doing is you're going to start with this group. It's called your home group. And then you're going to break off into an expert group where all the red pages, which is the need for power, are going to get together. And they're going to discuss power. So they really just bombard the issue of power. And then you're going to come back to your home group and I'm going to ask you to do a couple things. I'm going to ask you to teach the rest of your group about your need and give a couple of examples of when you would see this. What's more prevalent here on campus? Freedom or belonging or power or fun? In between. I think it's a lot of freedom and power. A lot of freedom? A lot of freedom? It's in between freedom and belonging because, and power, too, because, you know, you have a limit on where you can go, like the director's Good. You have, you know, the teachers tell you. Yeah, the teachers have the power, and the belonging is if you're in a group with friends and you all decide that you want to go work on the same project, that's belonging right there. And you okay. don't have the freedom to make your own choice let, let right me, there. Let so let's take it to the next level. Um, the next level is we're going to apply these needs in the, in the math classroom. So now here comes the mathematical portion of this. I want you to 
within your group, we've, we're just reviewing slope. I want you to plot these, or find the slope of these two points. So point P is negative 2 and 3. Point T is 4 and 6. And I want you to uh, find the slope of that line segment. And then I want you to find the line segment, uh, the slope of the line segment A, B. A is at 0, 2,000. And B is at 50, 600, or 50 and 600. So find the slope of both of those lines. So it would be 3 minus? No, it would be uh, 6 minus 3. Yeah, you can do it 6 way. minus 3. Yeah. That makes it easier, though. Because we can do 4 minus. It goes without saying that the preparation time for a lesson as complex as this is significant. It can, however, be used year after year and was a need-satisfying experience, not only for the students, but for the teacher as well.